Hello and welcome back to AIBCSummit.com. Now, over the past few weeks, Bitcoin price movement has been the talking point of the cryptocurrency and blockchain sphere, but DeFi still seems to be dominating the conversation in 2020. Maxime Balashevik, founder and CEO of Santiment.net, joins me now on the line. Maxime, it's great to catch up with you. How are you today? Uh, how are you doing, Jessica? Very nice. Thanks for uh, inviting. Uh, uh, long time to talk. And it's it's, uh, a I think. Yes, and I think it's a great time indeed to uh, uh, be in the middle of what's happening now in crypto space. Yep. Exactly. It's really interesting. And this is why I wanted to catch up because I think our last uh, interview was, I think, around three years ago. And since then, the, the space has changed enormously. And one big thing that's changed is the DeFi space. So October 2020 really noted the DeFi space dropping 25% even in a single day after huge 2020 serves. Uh, and we saw Bitcoin surpassing 13,000 US dollars. And I have to ask you, I'm actually asking, are the fundamentals still strong for the DeFi space? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. And uh, uh, I will show later a um, few uh, charts because, you know, uh, belief is one thing. Uh, data is uh, uh, another thing. Even though in, in investing, trading, or we always uh, deploy intuition. So all, the data alone is not enough. So you need to have some intuition or some insight for the future. But data shows... Uh, it is as strong as before. It just, uh, uh, in my opinion, mm, or from what I've seen, three years, it's a good time you mentioned three years with time. Uh, in the crypto, everything works in the cycles mm, and these cycles are relatively fast. And this is for us human. On one side, we know everything goes in cycle. I know sun goes up and goes down. Very simple, we wake up and go sleep. Uh, but it's, at the same time, somehow it's uh, uh, difficult to uh, apply the same uh, obvious rule to our normal life uh, in, in, in a crypto investment. Everything goes in cycles. Bitcoin, Bitcoin never goes only up and only down. No, it, uh, it goes through the uh, different uh, transformation cycles. And the same for DeFi. Uh, it finished one cycle uh, or, yeah, I would say it finished one cycle and uh, regrouping for another one. And the data shows... Uh, uh, network activity as active uh, as before, users activity as as, uh, as active as before. Just the price corrected, because as typically in crypto, uh, it overshoots in both directions, way up and way down. And um, I believe all good. I believe all good. Yeah. We've really seen the huge surges um, from Ethereum and actually putting a lot of stress on on the Ethereum mm. blockchain. How much is the industry growing and then moving forward? At what point yeah. you mentioned like Polkadot, for example, are we going to have to see these other alternatives really come into play to, to help support this growing industry? I will start with one. Uh, uh, this is what we have on, by the way, it's on our, uh, on our application is accessible. So at any time you can explore it later on. Uh, app sentiment and then you will see dashboards. So there is this, this dashboard dedicated to uh, DeFi in one specific segment in um, decentralized exchanges, Texas. Now, yes, if I scroll up, I will see that uh, volume, this is when you remember a few days ago there was a hack on the Harvest Protocol. This is how volume spiked that everything before, uh, not even uh, visible. So the volume, but if we will exclude this, you will see that the volume of trades, yeah, that's in Clyde. But the amount of trades, it means the amount of participants uh, who are exchanging uh, uh, values, it's not only didn't decline, it just stay as high as before. And the numbers, it's very impressive. It's on a daily basis. Uh, and we see that uh, normally amount of trades, it's uh, rarely below 50,000 a day, 50,000 a day, sometimes back in 60 and 70. And just to uh, make a, a, a relation to what we've seen before, uh, when DeFi started, because it started already last year, I remember talking in Osaka in DEFCON, I was already preparing a presentation on DeFi space. And it was in an insider circle, it was known, and a lot of hopes. At that time, we had uh, 7,000 in the best case, and it's combined yeah, across all protocol, mostly like around 5,000. I remember this number, around 5,000. Uh, trades were done. Now it's 100 times more. 
So I remember at that time, uh, all changes looked like so massive, but now if we compare where we are now, they look like, like a dwarf, so small. The next wave should bring even, uh, even higher uh, increase of activity. Uh, um, or, well, actually there is alternative, but we'll maybe talk about it later. Uh, so total amount of trades. Yeah, maybe I will stop by this. And then another one. Uh, Based this on is the charts what, there, yes, Maxim, because yeah. you mentioned yes. uh, waves and cycles, are you able yes. to look at the, the charts and maybe predict when we might see a next influx of users or price increase based on the chart uh, that you can uh, see? There is, there is, uh, there is a typical, uh, from behavior point of, from behavior analytic point of view, whenever you see exponential growth like this, yeah, it can be described as exponential growth. The way down or stabilization, it's more or less takes the same time as the growth, either the time or the price. If something starts growing, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what, what price can we take on as a good an example? Mm, uh, maybe iFi token, yeah? Let's see, even though I prepared, okay, let me see. Yeah. Uh, if we take iFi, Yeah, and then I need to take much shorter time range, maybe last month. So and I will remove this to metrics. Actually, one month is too little. Let's take a long, like here, yeah? So typically, whenever we see, yeah, this kind of exponential growth, and it's a, a grow, I remember, uh, I find when after it was listed uh, and uh, uh, mining uh, was in full power, so the price was around three thousand, yeah? and then we grow to thirty, almost actually even forty thousand. So this is by all definition exponential growth. After this correction, when it starts, it either shoots down to the point of origination or it takes the same amount of time. Yeah? So you can say how long did we grow exponentially? this amount of time. How long will correct this amount of time? And we are very close to end the cycle. Yeah. Uh, and combined with the knowledge that typically it uh, changes, uh, sometimes Bitcoin leads the charge. And then whenever new money comes uh, 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 and uh, big players satisfied with Bitcoin, they start uh, investing in more risky uh, protocols. Then altcoins lead the charge. So now Bitcoin is uh, uh, leading the charge and we see more and more news how Bitcoin is uh, going to change, how altcoin are going to die. It will get to some extreme and then it will flip again. And uh, from, from charts I'm seeing, uh, the, the uh, amount of time passed is enough. We might have a few more weeks, yeah, but I would not uh, be expecting much more. So we're actually quite close to the storm, in my opinion. And it's good timing when you contact with me. <laughs> so we're coming at quite a quite good time. Yeah, it's taken from time perspective, from price perspective, whatever was pumped up, it went down exactly to the point where it started. And uh, typically, how, this is how it happens. Yeah. Uh, and just to clarify what you mean there for some of our viewers that might be watching. So when you say kind of the new, the, the, the on the way to the storm, do you mean that a correction is in place or a correction has potentially already happened or we might be potentially it's preparing to almost see happened. Dam uh, already, already uh, happened? It's a, well, in, in many tokens, uh, we removed 50, or well, most tokens, 50 to or 70 percent of earlier. This, by all definition, can be said as a correction. Uh, if we get uh, 10, 20 percent more, okay, good, we can. But correction happened. It uh, already one and a half months in uh, in uh, in the token, in most of the tokens. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because we have seen some very strong news coverage from projects like Uniswap. Yearn as well was a huge um, talking point in 2020, uh, but Curve, Maker, are they as well? So yes. for future prices, because we've kind of already, but just to get a little bit more insight from you there, are you expecting that actually at the moment this is quite a nice entry point for people that are new to the DeFi space and haven't yet got involved? Uh... Yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. I personally uh, looking for uh, one more dump and I hope it will happen in iFi, in Yearn. 
uh, if it goes just sl slightly below 12,000, but it's me, you know, uh, I have my specific way of managing risk and uh, uh, expecting rewards. If uh, someone is not active uh, or cannot be active, now it's not a bad time at all. Yeah? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if you remember our last talk a few years ago, I always say uh, it's okay to share and actually good to share knowledge. Uh, but to make decision, everyone has uh, needed on his own uh, because uh, uh, risk is here, cannot be removed, and it's very volatile. And your emotional suffering will be according to how you genuinely function as a human. So I'm fine with taking risk. I have no problem with that. <laughs> if you're fine, it's another question, you know. Uh, if you can sustain, but uh, definitely now after we moved uh, in most tokens 15, some in 70% down, you will probably not suffer much. Just uh, make sure you don't pick up uh, uh, some mm, too risky tokens. Yeah. Union swap is okay in my opinion. Ren BTC is okay. Yarn is okay. Uh, I find mm -hmm. they do they serve the specific purpose uh, which is needed. And uh, they have big communities behind a big amount of uh, stakeholders or token holders. They are uh, less risky than many others. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, Maxim, you've given us plenty of insight and information there. Thank you so much for the visual information as well. I'm sure our viewers found it really insightful. Uh, so thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Jessica, for inviting us. It was always a pleasure uh, talking and sharing with you. Thank you so much. Well, that's all for myself and Maxine, but we'd love to hear how you found this interview. If you found the information beneficial, please share your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to AIBC Summit for more blockchain information.